Hi guys and thanks for joining me today. This is Mike and today I wanted to show you how I changed the fire and dragonfly lantern from Dreaming Tree into this fun and festive cute Christmas version of the lantern using obviously the fire and dragonfly lantern as well as the Santa from the freebie Santa wine bottle wrapper. I am going to be doing this in Shortcuts a Lot 5 so let's get started. All right, so what I have here on my screen, on the left hand side, I have the panels that come with the fire and dragonfly lantern from Dreaming Tree. And on the right hand side is an actual blank panel that Dreaming Tree provides in the extras folder. And so this is provided in case you wanted to make your own custom template, but not all companies provide that. So I wanted to show you today how you would go ahead and create your own template and as well as the outline. So the first thing that we need to do is get rid of this design. So I've made sure that my selection tool is highlighted in the top left and my object is selected, which it is. And I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and I'm going to break apart. And it looks like just everything turns solid. But if I were to move this off to the side, you would see that I have some designs underneath. If I pull this one, you're going to see the same thing. Now this is handy if you were going to, uh, if you wanted to make a design like this, you could go ahead, I'm going to just undo that. If you have the design underneath, you could just go ahead and highlight your solid object. And then you could go to object and merge and you would have your design, which is pretty cool. For this, I want to start with making the outline here, this type of frame that's over on the right hand side. Now, if you are making a panel, what's easiest is to make one and then to duplicate it as many times as you need. So for this example, I will eventually need four, but we're only going to do it to one and then duplicate it so that they're all the same exact size, shape, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and just highlight all of these and hit the delete key. All right. Now there's a couple different ways that you can do this and there's not a really right or wrong way, but I'm going to use the shadow effect. And so I'm going to go to effects and shadow. And I'm going to change the color of this so that you can see this. So let's get this pinkish. And for the type, I'm going to change that to rounded and I'm going to do an inset. And as you can see, it's pretty much covering the entire square there. But if I increase it, you'll slowly see it start to shrink in. If I decrease it, it gets bigger. So for this example, I've already decided what I wanted and I'm going to do 0 0.20. So I'm just going to back this out to 0 0.20. I'm going to hit OK. And now I have, in essence, I have two squares here. OK, I'm going to undo that because using the shadow, it actually puts that right in the center exactly where I need it. So I don't have to use the align tool or anything else. It's, it's perfect. I do want to make sure that I select both of them and I want to go to object and you guessed it. I want to go to merge. And besides the color, that looks pretty darn close to what the uh, provided panel looks like. So that is a quick and easy way to create your own panels if the company or the SVG you're working with doesn't automatically supply one. So for this example, I am going to use the one that was supplied. So I am going to copy it. And I'm going to go over here to my other project where you can see I already have my Santa Claus here. And I'm just going to go edit and paste. And I'm going to move that down here out of the way a little bit. Now, one quick tip that I did want to show you is I do see some people asking, how do you get your uh, objects off the mat here? So if you go to edit up at the top and you go to preferences and then you click edit, the very first checkbox says keep objects on mat when dragging. Now, if you have that checked, you're only able to drag things on the mat. Unchecked allows you to move it off the mat. So 
you get a, you have a lot of room over here and it's very beneficial to be able to move things off the map. All right, so for this example, I do not need these big black rectangles, but as you can see, they are all together. As I move this, the Santa is attached to these. So it is highlighted. You can see that it is highlighted. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna break apart. Now I'm just gonna click on the top one, hit my delete key. Now these, this rectangle has some score lines in it. So if I was just to delete that, you'd see, you kind of, you can't really see them, but you can see that they're getting towards the bottom and I wanna make sure that I delete everything. So what I'm gonna do is just highlight this entire box and hit the delete key. And now that is completely gone. Now I wanna move this guy back over here. I'm just gonna get my uh, area set up and I'm gonna move this a little bit over here. Perfect. Now the next step is important. We're gonna be resizing these to fit into this square here. So in order to make sure that they all resize together, I'm gonna to go ahead, I have my selection tool, which is the arrow, the top left arrow so highlighted, and I'm gonna drag and make sure I select everything that I wanna resize. So now everything is in that uh, selection box. I can right click and I can group it. And now grouping it means that I can move them and I can resize them and they will all be resized to the same exact proportions. So now what we wanna do is we wanna resize these to fit inside this panel here. So if I move my mouse up here to the top right hand corner, you'll see, hopefully you can see that the arrow has turned to a double arrow. That means that I can resize this. Now if I hold my shift key in, it will stay in proportion and I can slide this all the way down. And you can see everything went together. Now I'm just gonna drag this over here. And what I want is the top to touch the top of the, pan the uh, layer or this uh, panel here. And I want the bottom to slightly touch that as well. So I need to make this just a little bit bigger. So we'll scale this up just a tiny bit. And I'm gonna use my arrow keys cause you can move your arrow keys. And it looks like I still need a little bit bigger. So we'll scale this guy up just a little bit more. So he's touching the top. Let's see if we did it. Ah, just close. I think I need a tiny bit more. And I'll show you a little bit in just a second why we need to make sure that that touches. Okay, that looks like that's gonna be good for me. All right, so I'm gonna move these back over here for a second so that they're out of the way. All right, so now what do I need to do is to ungroup these. So I've selected them again. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to ungroup because I only need to work with the Santa right now. And so I am going to bring this down here. I'm gonna make sure that the top and bottom are touching. Let's move this over here so you can see this a little better. And I'm gonna zoom in. So I wanna make sure that the top and bottom are touching and they are and I want to highlight this and I want to make sure that he is exactly in the center of that. So I'm going to go to object, align, and I'm going to align centers. So it's perfectly aligned horizontally, horizontally and vertically. And then all I need to do is go to path and union. And now that is joined. Perfect. And now what you'll notice is that all of these have been resized as well. So everything will fit exactly on to here. Now this is at the bottom, so you're not gonna really see it until I bring it back to the top. So let me find it over here in the layers panel. You'll see that it's highlighted blue over in the layers panel. So if I click and I drag that to the top, you'll see that that goes to the top, that fits. You can see this is his face. If I move the face over there, that's 
at the bottom too. I need to move the face right below the beard. I can just drag that right below. And you'll start seeing that everything lines up properly. So now let's zoom out. Now the only thing that you need to do now is if you're making four panels, we need four of all of these elements. So the easiest way to do that, and it really depends on what machine you're using. If you're using a Cricut, the Cricut is gonna automatically separate your colors by matte, which is kind of easy and helpful. If you're using another machine, you may wanna go ahead and just um, separate all of your colors onto different uh, projects and then save them as separate colors. But I'm gonna show you something real quick here. I'm just putting these really close. So these are pretty close. And like I said, I need four of these, so I'm gonna highlight these. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna group. And I'm gonna edit copy and I'm gonna edit paste. I'm gonna edit paste and I'm gonna edit paste. So now I have four of these and you just wanna move these around. And like I said, it really depends on the cutting machine you're using. You might want to um, separate these by color. I'm just going to go ahead for demonstration purposes, put these here. And so you wanna make sure that these all fit on the mat. And then this one, I wanna make sure that's highlighted. So it's highlighted, I'm gonna edit cut, and cut just copies it to the clipboard. So this would be one file that I was able to save because I have four copies. If I click on new project and okay, I can do edit and paste. There it is. Let's move that over here. Perfect. I can do edit, paste, edit, paste, and edit, paste. And now I have my four copies. And now I can go ahead and I would save this one as well. And then I would have my four base panels. And there you go. That is how you would customize a panel for an SVG file that you have. I hope this was helpful. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.